The planet Nula, homeworld of the peaceful amphibious Nula race, was once a paradise. Lush purple forests and sparkling seas covered its surface. Nula children spent carefree days swimming through holographic coral reefs projecting from city walls, while adults worked side by side in harmony. That paradise was shattered the day the brutal Xenox Empire attacked. Their fleet of jagged midnight black ships filled the skies, raining down apocalyptic fire on the Nula cities. The panicked Nulas tried to evacuate their children first, only to watch in horror as the evacuation ships were blasted out of the sky by the ruthless Xenox. The Nula Planetary Defense Force valiantly counterattacked, their sleek, silvery ships clashing with the black hulls of the Xenox destroyers. But the Xenox had grown strong by conquering other worlds, while the peaceful Nula had not been in a proper war for generations. One by one, the defense ships fell in flames. Finally, the Xenox descended on the capital city of Ula'an itself. Their troops rampaged through the streets, mercilessly cutting down every Nula civilian in their path. The great glowing spires of the city burned and collapsed. Nula council leader Zandora watched helplessly from a hidden bunker under the burning city. Tears streamed down her amphibious face onto the pearl collar of office around her neck. She had failed her people. It would take a miracle to save them now. In desperation, she authorized a subspace message to the only beings in the galaxy known to be more brutal than the Xenox, the humans of Earth. She offered them faster-than-light technology in exchange for military aid. It was a gamble. Humans were an emerging spacefaring race, having recently developed crude, sublight ships. But reports indicated these humans had an almost predatory aggressiveness, combined with rapidly advancing technology. Given the right weapons, they might give even the dreaded Xenox pause. For the Nula, it was the last hope. If the humans refused, the Nula race would go extinct. The Xenox were not known for showing mercy to the conquered. On Earth, Zandora's plea caused heated debate in the highest levels of government. We can't get involved in an alien war, argued the isolationists. We'd be throwing away human lives for nothing. But others saw opportunity. If we aid these Nula and defeat the Xenox, we could gain vital technology while establishing ourselves as galactic power players, the interventionists countered. And if we don't stop the Xenox here, their empire will only grow stronger. Ultimately, humanity's warlike nature won out. The president authorized an elite fleet of starships to depart for Nula. Armed with rail guns, nuclear warheads, and the indomitable human fighting spirit, they blasted into the unknown darkness of space. On Nula, Zandora waited anxiously for a response. The battered remnants of her people huddled in underground bunkers beneath their once glorious cities. The future of her race hung by a thread, when word came that the humans had agreed to intervene, joyful tears filled Zandora's eyes. Perhaps there was a chance after all. She rallied her people with a rousing speech. My fellow Nula, we must never surrender, even in our darkest hour. Soon human ships will arrive to join us against our enemy. But our survival depends not on them alone, but on you. Hope rekindled in the Nulis' hearts. If they could just hold on a little longer, these ferocious humans would help them get vengeance against the hated Xenox. A tiny chance had opened to save their homeworld. But as the Nula lifted their eyes to the stars, waiting for their new allies to appear, none could imagine the whirlwind they had unleashed by inviting these enigmatic and brutal humans into their galaxy. The human fleet dropped out of FTL on the outskirts of the Nula system, their gleaming ships bristling with armaments. On the bridge of the flagship RSS Indomitable, Admiral Silva gazed at the planet Nula on the view screen. Even from space, the scars of war were visible. 
Columns of smoke trailed from bombed-out cities, marring the planet's lush purple surface. Xenox attack ships inbound, reported his sensor officer. They're launching fighters. Sure enough, a swarm of menacing black attack ships raced out to intercept the humans, unleashing a barrage of laser fire. The Admiral barked orders to evade and return fire. The human gunners responded, unleashing devastating volleys from the new railgun batteries. Xenox fighters and bombers erupted in flame across the void, but more kept coming. There's too many of them, shouted the tactical officer over the din of battle. Our point defenses can't handle this. Maintain fire, ordered the Admiral calmly. Launch all fighters. The human starfighters streaked into the fray, dancing and weaving through the explosions. The Xenox fought ruthlessly, crashing their ships kamikaze-style into the human cruisers, but the human spirit was unbreakable. Their technology and skill soon prevailed the Xenox attack wave melting away into scrap. Admiral Silva leaned forward intently in his command chair. Take us into low orbit. Search for survivors on the surface. The great ships descended through banks of black smoke to sweep the shattered cities with sensors. To the human's surprise, they detected clusters of life forms hidden deep underground, mostly around the capital. The Nula leadership had burrowed their people into bunkers and subterranean emergency shelters to ride out the orbital bombardment. Silva opened a channel using the alien protocols they had been provided. This is Admiral Silva of the United Earth Federation. We are here to provide assistance. There was a burst of startled-sounding alien chatter before a reply came back in awkward English. Greetings, humans did not think you would come so quickly. We are grateful. Working together, the humans and remaining Nula defense forces created a safe zone on the surface, pushing back the Xenox ground troops with strafing runs from human fighter jets. Once the area was secure, the bedraggled Nula refugees began to emerge from their bunkers to glimpse their alien saviors for the first time. The Admiral took a shuttle down to the surface to meet the Nula leaders, as the ramp lowered, he saw a delegation of amphibious aliens waiting for him in the rubble of their city. Most were a deep, iridescent blue, with large, sad eyes on stalks protruding from their heads. The few children clung to the colorful robes of the adults, peering at the humans with unabashed curiosity. One alien with an ornate pearl collar stepped forward, clearly their leader. Greetings, Admiral, she said in hesitant English. I am Council Leader Zandora. On behalf of all Nula, I humbly thank you and your species. Today you have given us back hope itself. Admiral Silva inclined his head in respect. I am sorry we could not arrive sooner, but the fight is not over. My troops and I are at your disposal, Council Leader. Just tell us where to strike and we'll rain hell down on these Xenox. Zandora seemed startled by his blunt words, but resolution hardened in her expression. Then, let us plan our counterattack. In the coming days, an unlikely alliance formed between humans and Nulas. The humans shared food, medicine, and supplies with the bedraggled refugees. Their fighters flew dangerous sorties to root out Xenox ground troops, and in turn, the Nula glimpsed the incredible fighting spirit of these bizarre but steadfast aliens. Together, they began to nourish a hope that had seemed lost. The Xenox would pay for what they'd done. When the counteroffensive came, it would take the conquerors completely by surprise. In the weeks after the humans' arrival, the tides began to turn against the Xenox invasion. The combined human Nula fleet went on the offensive, striking back at the Xenox ships that orbited over once peaceful Nula cities. Human railgun batteries blasted away at Xenox capital ships while Nula bombers darted through the fray targeting Xenox fighter bays. Admiral Silva stood resolutely on the bridge of the Indomitable, calling out firing solutions and commanding the fleet he now considered his own, human and Nula ships alike.
The multi-species strike teams he deployed to boarded Xenox vessels fought with seamless coordination, their unfamiliarity giving way to hard-earned trust. After long weeks of fierce space battles, the Allies emerged victorious. The devastated planet Nula was finally free of the Xenox menace. Down on the surface, Nula refugees gazed up as their alien liberators descended from the heavens once more. But this time, instead of fear, they felt only joy and gratitude. The humans' valor and fighting spirit had inspired the peaceful amphibians beyond imagining. Old prejudices based on alien appearance fell away. The Nula children were especially curious about the visitors, poking and prodding the amused Marines who tried to keep straight faces. One Marine named Private James Carter stood sentry duty in a refugee camp. The young daughter of a Nula council member shyly approached him. Her name was Ula, and her eyes were still haunted from the loss of her childhood. Kneeling down, Carter offered her his ration pack. When she learned it contained the confection called chocolate, her eyes lit up with delight. In that moment, looking at her joy, Carter was reminded of his own daughter back on Earth who he hadn't seen for long months. Other friendships blossomed between humans and Nula. The aliens took eager interest in human cuisine, music, games, and mythology. In return, the Nula taught the humans about their ancient history, art, and culture. Laughter echoed through the refugee camps for the first time as Marines tried to play the complex Nula instrument called the Czarfish, plucking its glowing tendrils to produce discordant whistles. Their new allies found their clumsy efforts deeply amusing, but there was still one shadow hanging over this newfound spirit of friendship the Nula home planet itself was decimated. Although they had reclaimed it, the surface cities were bombard blasted wastelands. So the humans extended another offer. They would help the Nula relocate what was left of their population and culture to a new Nula colony world discovered deeper in the sector. There, they could start rebuilding their civilization under the protection of the human fleet. When Admiral Silva proposed the idea to Council Leader Zandora, the amphibian broke down in tears. You have already done so much for us, she choked out. Yet still you make this generous offer. We never imagined aliens could demonstrate such compassion. The Nula will never forget how the humans saved us from extinction. The Admiral, normally gruff, was taken aback. He patted her awkwardly on one webbed hand. We're all in this fight together now, he muttered. With the remnants of the Nula loaded into vast human transport ships, the Alliance set a course for Nula's new homeworld. They had survived the first battles together, but the real test still lay ahead. For the Xenox Empire sprawled across many star systems and their wrath had only just been awakened. The Allied fleet dropped out of FTL on the outskirts of the Znox home system, spoiling for the final fight. Through the viewports, the crew gazed upon the heart of the Xenox Empire, a vast mechanized world laced with orbital shipyards and defense platforms. Admiral Silva's gravelly voice crackled over the fleet comm channel. All ships stand by to attack speed. We hit those shipyards first. On his crisp order, the Alliance fleet surged forward, human and Nula ships side by side. The Xenox were clearly not expecting an imminent assault on their core system. For a few critical moments, the orbital defenses were caught off guard. The human carriers flung wave after wave of fighters and bombers into the attack. Rail guns and laser batteries hammered the closest shipyard until it was a glowing wreck venting atmosphere. The Nula pilots expertly targeted sensor arrays and communications hubs, blinding Xenox command and control. But the surprise did not last long. Swarms of Xenox fighters soon blackened space, rushing to defend their empire's industrial heart. Beams and charged particles crisscrossed through the combat zone. On the bridge of the human cruiser Shanghai, Captain Vaughn gripped his command chair as the ship rocked under enemy barrage. Shields down to 40%, yelled his tactical officer. 
but Vaughn only grinned, living for this moment. Give them hell, guns! The Shanghai's batteries answered, blasting apart fighters targeting the Nula cruisers on their flank. Vaughn saw one of the amphibian ships take a fatal hit to its gravity core, spurting escape pods before coming apart in a silent flower of flame. Clenching his fist, Vaughn silently vowed to avenge them. For a time, it seemed the battle teetered on a knife's edge, with neither side able to gain the advantage. But gradually, the Alliance's numbers, skill, and unbreakable will began to take their toll. Then came the moment that would be told around Nula campfires for generations. A Nula pilot named Tuscara, eyes ablaze with cold fire, decoupled his one-person craft from its mothership and made a solo dive straight for the Xenox Command dreadnought looming at the center of their formation. Weaving and juking through the lethal obstacle course of laser fire, he skillfully slipped through the behemoth's point defense shields before slamming his fighter down a thermal exhaust vent. Then he detonated his entire ship's energy core. The explosion rippled through the gargantuan dreadnought like a raging tsunami. Power systems failed, weapons went offline, and escape pods burst free of its disintegrating hull. For the first time, the Xenox knew what it felt like to stare utter defeat in the face. Vaughn raised a triumphant cry as the massive enemy flagship disappeared inside a boiling cloak of plasma. The same explosion lit up the faces of his human and Nula bridge officers. Their command ship is down, Vaughn bellowed. Advance and keep pressure on their orbital defenses. This battle is ours. In the aftermath, as damaged Xenox ships fled and defense platforms crumbled in ruin, a decisive victory shone before the Alliance. By bringing the fight to the Xenox inner sanctum, they had struck a blow from which their enemy could not recover. Down on the planet's surface, Xenox commanders stared upward in horror as their supposedly unassailable home system burned around them. Their seat of power was no longer safe. As the Allies mopped up the last pockets of resistance, Vaughn opened a fleet-wide channel from the bloodied but unbowed bridge of the Shanghai. You all make me proud to count you as allies. We've won the day by fighting together, side by side. He raised a fist skyward. Victory! Their answering cheers echoed across space. Three months after the defining battle of Xenox Prime, an eerie calm had settled over the region of space formerly occupied by the Xenox Empire. Where ruthless conquerors once held sway, now the banner of the new allied forces of humans and Nula flew over colony worlds cruelly subjugated for so long under the Xenox heel. One by one, the freed planets were declaring allegiance to the new power rising in the void. On the bridge of the RSS Indomitable, Admiral Silva watched the tally climb day by day, world after world pledging their loyalty and gratitude for their liberation from tyranny. With the Xenox threat neutralized, the Indomitable was en route back to Earth escorting a precious cargo, the promised faster-than-light technology that would catapult human science generations ahead. Council leader Zandora herself was aboard, supervising the handover. I still find it remarkable, she mused, that your people fought so fiercely to save others not your own. Your species shows such promise. I hope we will continue to walk in friendship together. Admiral Silva nodded gruffly. I'll admit, when we came to your aid, some among our leaders saw only advantage for Earth. But being shoulder to shoulder in that battle taught me we have much to learn from each other. Back in their new colony on Nova Nula, the amphibian aliens were adapting rapidly. Human engineering had helped them build new, gleaming cities from the ashes. Already, the laughter of Nula children once again echoed through sunlit parks and shimmering hydroponic gardens. Yet some elders worried in private as they watched the ever-growing human fleet fan out among the stars. Such power could corrupt even the best intentions, and mankind had proven itself extraordinarily adept at making war.
They took solace from leaders like Admiral Silva who spoke of their deepening connection to the Nula as brothers in arms. In the coming years, the two civilizations would depend on such advocates of unity and wisdom to guide the fledgling alliance. When the Indomitable finally reached Earth, humanity celebrated. Parades and ceremonies marked the returning heroes and honored those lost in distant stars. But greatest was the jubilation at the technology that would launch mankind's long-awaited exploration of their galactic neighborhood. On the bridge of her historic ship, Zandora handed the FTL drive specifications to human scientists with a reverent solemnity. Use this gift responsibility and for the good of all, she implored them. Moved by her sincerity, they promised they would. As the news spread across Earth, a sense of wonder stirred in humankind. At long last, their reach would extend beyond the confines of their lonely solar system. Humanity's true potential was still undiscovered, and an entire galaxy awaited them. In years to come, the Indomitable would sit in a place of honor in a museum as the ship that turned the tide of Earth's first interstellar war. But future generations would remember its mission as much more. It was the vessel where fierce human determination met gentle Nula wisdom, and together, two species took the first step on the long road to mutual understanding. A road that would one day lead to lasting peace for all.